Good morning, everyone. Buenos días. Muy buenos días a todos. Mi nombre es Sonia Hernández. Soy profesora de historia y de estudios latinos y mexicoamericanos en la Universidad de Texas A&M en College Station. Es un placer tenerlos todos aquí en esta mañana. A nombre del equipo de investigadores, nos rehusamos a olvidar or refusing to forget. Les quiero dar la más cálida bienvenida a todos y les agradecemos por ser parte de este momento tan histórico. Aunque nos reunimos aquí en este día para conmemorar un episodio de violencia en contra de la comunidad de origen mexicano en 1915, también les quiero recordar que nos estamos reuniendo para recordar y reflexionar sobre la respuesta de la comunidad a esta violencia injusta. La develación o inauguración de este marcador histórico, la matanza de 1915, es uno de varios marcadores históricos que el equipo Refusing to Forget conmemorará en honor a las víctimas de violencia a manos de autoridades tejanas, los Texas Rangers, mejor conocidos en la comunidad como los Rinches de Texas, y otros partidos responsables de tanta violencia durante este periodo histórico más amplio que abarca de 1910 a 1920. En los alrededores de este sitio que nos congrega, la tierra se manchó de sangre, de sangre de tantos, de muchos mexicanos, que fueron juzgados sin el debido proceso. Como sociedad democrática fundada en la igualdad de los hombres y mujeres ante Dios, recordamos hoy con dolor a esos hombres, recordamos a sus hijos que dejaron huérfanos, a sus mujeres que dejaron viudas y en general a todos sus descendientes. Fue tanta la violencia durante este periodo histórico que periódicos de la época le llamaron la matanza, le llamaron también la hora de la sangre y también se refirieron a la época como un reinado total de terror. Dada tanta la violencia, surgieron voces de conciencia y voces de resistencia varias voces como la voz de Jovita Idar, una mujer escritora, periodista, feminista y luchadora de derechos civiles de Laredo, Texas. También surgió la voz del sheriff del condado de Cameron, W.T. Vaughn, que llegó al punto de ordenarle a sus agentes que protegieran a las a los, eh, personas detenidas para que no los llevaran a la fuerza y los mataran o lincharan. También surgió la voz de conciencia y de resistencia del abogado terrateniente y luchador de derechos civiles de Brownsville, José Tomás Canales, mejor conocido como JT Canales, que en 1919, 1919 ordenó una investigación para investigar a los, a los Texas Rangers por tanta violencia injustificada. A más de 100 años de este episodio violento, reflexionamos y pensamos en las vidas que se perdieron, en el significado histórico de este evento, de este marcador, de la resistencia de la comunidad, al igual de la importancia de reconocer y aprender algo de todo esto. Nos reunimos hoy aquí, no con afanes de revancha, no queremos revancha, no queremos venganza, sino que queremos recordar que las mujeres y los hombres que han construido este país lo han hecho con fe en la justicia y en la libertad. Esas son las cosas que con este marcador no debemos olvidar. 
Muchas gracias por acompañarnos y ahora le voy a ceder la palabra a mi compañero, el doctor John Morán González. As my colleague, uh, Dr. Sonia Hernandez mentioned, I'm John Moran Gonzalez. I'm the director of the Center for Mexican American Studies at the University of Texas at Austin. And I would like to welcome you here today uh, on behalf of the members of Refusing to Forget uh, to this unveiling of the Texas State Historical Marker about La Matanza of 1915. Although we gather today to remember the tremendous violence perpetrated against the border Mexican community just over a century ago, we also take this opportunity to commemorate and reflect upon that our community's resilience in the face of this great injustice. This historical marker is but one of several that the Refusing to Forget project has requested from the Texas Historical Commission to honor the victims of state-sanctioned violence between 1910 and 1920. Hundreds of Mexicans and Mexican-Americans lost their lives at the hands of Texas law enforcement, including the Texas Rangers, the Los Rinches, and vigilantes during this time. Near this site where we now stand, between San Benito and Brownsville, people of Mexican origin were murdered while in the custody of the authorities who deprived them of life, liberty, and due process of law. Many of the victims were forcibly taken from jails and lynched or shot in the back while allegedly attempting to escape. The violence was so great that the newspapers of the day recounted these deaths as, quote, the hour of blood and, quote, a reign of terror. But above the violence arose voices of conscience and resistance, such as that of Cameron County Sheriff W.T. Vaughn, who ordered his deputies to protect prisoners in their custody with their lives. Brownsville attorney Jose Tomas, or JT Canales, also protested, and in 1919, when in office as a state representative, had these atrocities by the Texas Rangers investigated by the state legislature. After 102 years, we can now reflect upon the lives that were lost, upon the historical significance of these events, and of the resilience of the community, even as we recognize the importance of not only remembering a violent past, but also taking those lessons learned in order to build a more just tomorrow. Now, uh, in addition to Dr. Hernandez and myself, I would like to introduce the remaining members of the Refusing to Forget project at this point. Uh, Dr. Trinidad Gonzalez of South Texas College, Dr. Ben, <laughs> Dr. Ben uh, Johnson of Loyola, Loyola University of Chicago, <laughs> and Dr. Monica Munoz Martinez of Brown University. Uh, we will have a chance to hear from each of them uh, during this program. We would like to thank the many sponsors who, institutional sponsors, who made this event and associated events possible. Uh, the Center for Mexican American Studies at UTRGV, the Latino, Latina, Mexican, and Mexican American Studies at Texas A&M University, the Center for Mexican American Studies at the University of Texas at Austin, South Texas College, the Brownsville Museum of Fine Arts, uh, El Hueso de uh, Fraile, and the University Library at UTRGV, and of course TxDOT and uh, the Department of Public Safety. Uh, in addition to these institutions, uh, we would like to recognize uh, the uh, leaders in our community who are here today. Uh, 
Dr. Patricia Alvarez McHatton, uh, the Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at UTRGV. Uh, Dr. Walter Diaz, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts at UTRGV. And uh, of course, you are uh, honored guests here at this event. So at, at this point, we'll go ahead to the uh, uh, prayer uh, for this event. Le voy a pedir uh, que nos acompañe aquí al frente al Padre Ignacio de la Comunidad de Brownsville para que nos dé una bendición. Muy buenos días, queridos hermanos y hermanas aquí presentes. El tiempo pasa dejándonos tan solo los recuerdos del ayer, los cuales nos deben dar una lección para convivir fraternalmente y en paz en este mundo que el Creador nos dio. Por lo tanto, elevemos nuestra plegaria al Señor, pidiéndole su gracia y bendición a la vez. Let us pray. To you, Almighty Father, we humble raise our prayers on behalf of this place and for those who are here today and for all items in it. Consider blessing it <coughs> with your presence, giving to those that visit this historical marker protection and wisdom to remember those that deserve to be honored. Señor, te pedimos que bendigas este lugar y todo lo que hay en él con tu presencia, dando a todos los que lo visiten protección y sabiduría para que recuerden a todos aquellos que merecen ser recordados y honrados en todos los tiempos, como lo hacemos en estos momentos, al recordar a todos los caídos aquí en el año de 1915. Amén. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Ben Johnson, the author of the single most authoritative historical study of these events, who will offer some remarks on that history. Dr. Johnson. What do we accomplish by petitioning for this marker and coming here today to present it to the wider public? We cannot loosen the rope that was placed around the neck of Rodolfo Muñiz not far from here, unfire the bullets that riddled his body in July of 1915, convince his murderers that his life had value, or strip them of their badges for taking it from him. We cannot undo the orders and fear-mongering that led to his murder, or those of Jesus Bazan, Antonio Longoria, and countless others. We cannot return the land stolen from their heirs. We cannot return husbands to their wives or fathers to their orphaned children, like Juan Flores and nameless others. We are here to tell the truth about the past, that people suffered and died, often at the hands of their own government, for no justifiable reason that their land and independence were taken from them, that their families were denied the right to give them a dignified burial, that this was all sanctioned and encouraged at the highest levels of power, that many of the murderers are still celebrated in our history books and classes, on historical markers throughout the state, and in museums lionizing the Texas Rangers. But the past is unchangeable. It is the future that is ours to shape. 
By telling the truth about the past, in this case the hard truth, we work for a world where this kind of violence is not repeated. When we remember Rodolfo Muniz, we insist that he was somebody, a child of God, like us, like our neighbors, like the people we encounter working in the fields, in offices, sitting in theaters, in school, going about the business of their own lives. When we remember that he was killed by men authorized to use deadly force to uphold the law, we remind our fellow citizens that putting on a badge and uniform is no inoculation against venality and sadism in 1915 or 2017. When we say that legislators and governors and reporters look the other way and even endorse these actions, we remind our fellow citizens of the dangers of demagogues in high places today. When we celebrate those who tried to stop the violence, Sheriff W.T. Van rescuing prisoners from execution, Attorney Thomas Hook translating telegrams for help into English, journalist Jovita Idar and State Representative J.T. Canales risking their lives to expose the violence in public, we offer examples to be emulated today. The demons of our past are still with us. The Ku Klux Klan parades in our streets. Men arm themselves in fear and rage against their neighbors. Our government again targets Mexicans as criminals and invaders. We need an honest history for the living now more than ever. Today, we take one step towards that history. We refuse to forget. At this time, it is my great privilege and honor to introduce uh, our, our two speakers, two state representatives who will be offering some remarks upon today's occasion. I will introduce them one at a time. Uh, and right now, that would be a state representative, the Honorable Eddie Lucio III. Uh, he represents House District 38 in the Texas House of Representatives. Thank you. Thank you. I was hoping he wasn't going to call me next after that previous speaker who uh, did such a beautiful job of uh, articulating why we're here today. Um, but I will do my best to, to honor and continue uh, the theme. And let me say this, I want to thank my colleague, Terry Canales, for coming all the way from Edinburgh and being involved in this project. Terry, thank you and thank you for the, the work you, you do. He's a descendant of JT Canales. Uh, so for him to be involved in this project is an incredible thing. A uh, hundred years later to have one of his kin honoring the work he did. Uh, refusing to forget as the organization, thank you for what you do. You know, I'm, I'm Latino, Hispanic, grew up in this community. Didn't realize I was a minority until I went to Texas Tech. And my, my first day of class, I was in a room of 500 and I was the only person of color. Uh, and that was a very humbling experience. Uh, and it, you quickly want to know everything you can about your roots. So 18 years old, I was seeking out my heritage uh, and I continue to do that. There's so much we could take from today. Uh, the one thing I will say is I'm always a kind of glass is half full person and I'm sitting here um, living in a beautiful community, uh, raising my son peacefully. I have Hispanic, deputies uh, with the Department of Transportation looking over us in uniform and because of the civil rights leaders like Terry's family uh, I am here today because of their passion and hard work so in what I'm gonna take for today is tremendous gratitude and honor for all of the civil rights leaders who have paved the way for me to be able to do what I do today so to all those that are here thank you to the students especially uh, continue the good fight, continue that, those civil rights movements, and uh, I love those shirts. I might have to get one, but uh, thank you very much for, for allowing me an opportunity to be here. Thank you. At this time, it is my distinct privilege to introduce State Representative the Honorable Terry Canales. He represents District 40 in the Texas uh, State House of Representatives and 
has a special connection to uh, Jose Tomas or JT Canales that uh, uh, we're all uh, honored to have him here to speak before us today. Good morning. I'm extremely humbled to be here and I'll begin with that. I generally speak and my habit is to speak from my heart, but there was so much I had to say that this time I had to write it down. I have the privilege of serving as a member of the Texas House of Representatives. And I also have the honor of being the great nephew of JT Canales, who once upon a time served during a dark time in the state of Texas. He also served in the, as a member of the House of Representatives. He grew up on La Cabra Ranch in Premont, Texas with my grandfather, his brother, the very same ranch where I was raised. And as a young man, I recall reading a book by Tom Lee. It's a two novel, two volume book on the King Ranch. And I remember getting excited when I came across a passage in the book that quoted a letter from Captain Richard King to Richard Clayburgh, which stated, for the most part, that the Kings could not have made it or held on if, if their neighbor Andres Canales, my great grandfather, and J.T. Canales' father had not been there. That was the, what the book said. So I rushed to show my father the passage, and I was surprised when he laughed. And I'll never forget his remark. He said, he who has the money to buy the pen writes the history. According to the oral history passed down to my father, the King Ranch was anything but a friendly neighbor portrayed by Lee's book. The fact that through fear, intimidation, violence, and oftentimes murder, the kings amassed their vast land holdings. And the violence of those murders often took place at the hands of the Texas Rangers, who were their mercenaries. In the end, the threat was quelled and kept at bay by a Mexican general that we were related to. So JT's father, my great-grandfather, didn't fall victim to the Rangers or Captain King. This would have made JT not only intimately aware of who the Texas Rangers really were, what they were capable of, but it also set him on a one-way collision course with the lawless lawmen who threatened to take his father's land. As I mentioned, JT was later elected to the Texas House of Representatives. And in 1919, as you've heard before, in the face of unspeakable violence perpetrated across the entire state, but mainly in South Texas, JT, the only Mexican-American legislator, filed legislation to dramatically restructure the Rangers the largest perpetrator of the unlawful executions of some say hundreds, some estimate thousands of Mexican-Americans. He encountered and faced countless threats of violence, including death to himself and endangered himself and his family by speaking out against these injustices. His legislation gave birth to over three weeks of hearings in the chamber of the House of Representatives where more than 90 witnesses from across the state of Texas came to talk about the brutality of the Texas Rangers. Because the hearing's content was so brutal and reflected so poorly upon the state of Texas, copies of that hearing were sealed and not made public till the 1970s. JT is a true Mexican-American hero, but the history books have largely forgotten him, along with the victims of these terrible crimes and their families. Our Texas history books literally make no mention of them. Much like Tom Lee's account of how the King Ranch was a friendly neighbor, history sanitized is not real history. But today, we hold the pen. The stories told on this historical marker by the Refusing to Forget Project are an important part of a much larger story about the continual struggle of Texas Latinos who have been fighting for equal rights and the foundation of this state. In a time where the Texas Board of Education continues to remove Hispanic figures and often refers to Mexicans as lazy. This story is more important now than ever. Recently, as you've heard, we battled still. The Texas legislature this past session passed SB4, one of the most discriminatory laws ever drafted in modern times. It unquestionably targets Mexican Americans and once again pits state police against the Hispanic community. Today, we've traded the noose for handcuffs. And rather than take their lives in the literal sense, we take it in every other sense. Not by design, but I had the great distinction of giving the final speech in opposition of SB4. 
On the house floor, I invoke the story of La Matanza and my great uncle JT Canales. In my closing remarks, I told the House of Representatives that Texas had come far, but not that far. Be it fate, destiny, but I find it hard to believe it's a coincidence that a hundred years after my great uncle waged a war against the violence perpetrated by the Texas State Rangers, I have the great privilege to stand before you today, honored to have played a role in making this historical marker a reality and humbled by what it stands for and what it truly means. A person much wiser than me once said, those who forget their history are destined to repeat it. I suppose it would be more convenient for people to forget that there was a widespread sanctioned violence against Mexican Americans. But today, we refuse to forget. Thank you, Representatives Canales and Lucio. At this moment, I'd like to um, ask Dr. Trinidad Gonzalez from South Texas College and a member refusing to forget to come to the podium, and he will recognize the descendants. Uh, good morning. Uh, when we uh, began the process of uh, applying for this marker, uh, one of the intents, uh, besides bringing the history of that era that hasn't really been told, was also to finally have a recognition of the individuals who were killed. This is why we had a blessing. And in particular, uh, to, uh, uh, in doing that, to uh, ask the descendants if they could make it to the historical unveiling of the marker so that their families could finally be acknowledged uh, for what had happened to them. Uh, in many instances, some people who were killed, their bodies or remains were never recovered, uh, or they were found years later. And my family was lucky in the sense that my great-grandmother, Santos Gamboa, was able to bury her husband, Palino Cerda, and her father-in-law, Don Anciano, uh, when they were killed, uh, just a few yards away from her uh, at the time at Laguna Seca. And so at this point, I would like to ask uh, the descendants of those who were killed during this time period to please stand uh, for recognition. And uh, this is my two-month-old daughter, by the way. So <laughs> she's named after my uh, mother, her grandmother, who uh, unfortunately could not be here today with us. Uh, who I uh, grew up hearing a lot of stories from. My father as well told me the stories about the killing of my great-grandfather. But at this moment, uh, we're now going to unveil the, the marker, and I asked my Aunt Elma, who is the granddaughter of Santos Gambo and the granddaughter of Palino Cerda, uh, to do the unveiling for us. Thank you all again for being here. Uh, we wanted to read the text on the marker, um, but we also wanted to again thank the descendants who are here with us today, and also all of those who are here who already knew the history. In some cases, this is a history that is little known by people across the country, um, but here, especially in South Texas, uh, we've lived with the history, and people have shared the history and passed it down from generation to generation. And this plaque is just one uh, the first step, the first gesture at actually changing the landscape of history in South Texas so that it reflects um, the history that people have grown up with here in, in South Texas. So the text of the marker that stands now is the Matanza of 1915. In the late 19th and early 20th century, racial tensions near the United States-Mexico border and the lower Rio Grande Valley erupted into violence. The change from ranching to commercial agriculture and a shift in racial hierarchies led to the increased discrimination against Mexican Americans and Mexicans in the region. In addition, economic problems and the Mexican Revolution increased the immigrant population to Texas. This influx along with the rise in Anglo immigration to South Texas increased racial tensions. 
law enforcement and vigilante groups used violence and intimidation to quell and at times respond to a growing movement referred to as La Revolución de Texas. Some Mexicans and Mexican Americans envisioned this mo movement as a fight against discrimination, while some in law enforcement perceived it as a threat to new Anglo migrations in the area. This section of highway between San Benito and Brownsville was the site of countless killings of prisoners without due process. One of the first victims was Rodolfo Muniz, who was lynched in this, on this road in July 29, 1915, while in custody of local law enforcement. It is estimated that hundreds, possibly thousands of Mexican Americans and Mexicans were killed. Out of fear, many families fled Brownsville to Matamoros. A contemporary newspaper editorial referred to this period as the Matanza, the massacre of 1915. In 1919, the Texas legislature conducted a formal investigation into state and local law enforcement practices. Texas Rangers were reorganized as a result. Memories of the Matanza continue through scattered records and oral tradition, reflecting difficulties in recounting this violent yet pivotal time in Texas history. We also wanted to remind people who've joined us today to, to join us also at UTRGV, there's going to be a history harvest. And it's an effort by um, the Refusing to Forget Project, but also by the Special Collections to recognize that so many of the histories, that when, we, when the historians stand up here and say that hundreds if not thousands of people were killed, it's because we unfortunately don't have a, a, an exact record of all of the names of people that were, that were murdered, but also the names of the people who witnessed the acts of violence, who were intimidated, um, and, and who survived violence. And so we, we're hoping that people will share their stories with us so that we can record them, uh, keep a record of it, and if you have family photographs, if you have documents, please um, collaborate with us so that we can, that, so that we can make digital copies. You can keep them, but so that we have, we can help to build and recover this history. Um, we can't even begin to to truly reckon with the violence if we don't have a sense of how widespread it was. Um, and so we would really like your help in helping your your collaboration in creating. Um, an expansive record of this period of violence. So thank you. As a closing, we want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting uh, this important historical project. Les queremos dar las gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Este es un pequeño recordatorio que somos, que, que Texas es grande, lo suficientemente grande para la historia de todos nosotros. Eh, y este es un, un, un pequeño recordatorio que, aunque la historia sea gris, sea negra, es importante recordar en honor a las víctimas. Eso es muy importante y les agradecemos eh, por acompañarnos. Eh, we also want to remind you that the day is not over. We have events, including panels by scholars, including panels by students some of them here uh, with us today uh, over at the UTRGV Brownsville campus. Uh, and this is taking place at the Student Union, the second floor, the Gran Salon, uh, the second floor of the Student Union. So we hope that you can make it out there and continue to uh, be part of this historic moment. Thank you, everyone.